Welcome back to another edition of the NASA Fanboy Question Series. Today we're going to look at why NASA's scientists don't seem to agree with some parts of Einstein's theories. He postulated that if one is moving at a constant speed, let's say in a car, then you wouldn't be able to detect any motion unless the car speeds up, slows down or changes direction. So if you're traveling at say 50 mile an hour and then slow down to 45, you and your passengers would easily feel the difference. The same goes if the driver deviated slightly from his course, you would feel the effect, commonly quantified as g-force. NASA tells us that the Earth is rotating around the Sun at 66,600 miles an hour. That's motoring. If we could slow the Earth down by 5%, like the car, to 63,270 miles an hour, then I'm pretty sure we'd feel it. Not only would we feel it, but everything on the Earth would be instantly vaporized due to the massive g-force. So Earth is traveling at a constant speed, right? If it wasn't, then we simply couldn't live on it. But wait, they tell us Earth's orbit around the Sun is an ellipse. If an object has an elliptical orbit, then it has to speed up and slow down twice before it returns to its original position. To save all the nitpicking fanboys the time and trouble of pointing out that the eccentricity of the elliptical orbit with its aphelion at 147 million kilometers and its perihelion at 152 million kilometers is totally irrelevant to this argument. But I'm pretty sure some dipshit will try and use it as an argument in the comments section. The common thinking on this seemingly problematic observation is that the speeding up and slowing down of the Earth is so small throughout the year that we don't even feel it. That's not what Einstein said, but hey, let's roll with this explanation. Let's find out how small that change in speed is and try to ascertain whether we could indeed feel the difference when speeding up and slowing down. Okay class, out with your abacuses. Average orbital speed, 18.5 miles per second. Speed at aphelion, 18.2 miles per second. Speed at perihelion, 18.8 miles per second. From the slowest speed to the fastest speed, there is only a difference of 0.62 miles per second. Taken over a three month period, that's nothing. Or is it? The fastest speed is 67,752 miles an hour. The slowest speed is 65,520 miles an hour, giving a difference of 2,232 miles an hour. So, over a time period of three months, we have either sped up or slowed down over 2,000 miles an hour. Now divide that into the amount of days from top speed to slowest speed and we come up with the result that we are either accelerating or decelerating at 74.4 mile an hour every day. I'm pretty sure that Adam over at the Level Earth Observer Channel would not like to be operating his 250 foot high tower crane whilst the Earth below him slows down by 70 odd miles an hour per day. By the way, head over to his channel if you want to experience some real truth bombs. That's just the speed aspect of this conundrum. We're also allegedly tilting, spinning, following the sun, rotating around the galaxy, whizzing towards the great attractor and expanding outwards intact with the universe. That is one hell of a lot of motion going on. Go outside, sit on the grass and try and feel any movement. You can't. Neither can I, and I've never met anybody that can. If you still think we're hurtling through space at breakneck speeds in five different directions, I don't think I can help you. Space Busters, the channel that makes you think for yourselves. <laughs>